One final ESPN mock draft. What did Jonathan Gaffoni have to say now about the Hornets? Plus, we have some staff changes to update you on and this. Like, no, shorties. Uh, no shorties. No yeah. shorties. I'm, I'm an anti-shorty in this draft. <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> you are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, because we live. It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods, and that includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. There's David Walker. You can find him on Twitter at David B. Walker. Doug Branson. Find him on his Substack, stack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. And I'm Walker Mail. Listen to me, WFNZ, every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. David, are you ready for one more mock draft in your life as Doug presents it? We're winding down here. Two more days. Uh, we can make it. We can make it there if we try. We can make it there together, guys. One more mock draft. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, Doug, you, you brought one more to the table here. I just want to know, before we reveal the pick in what is probably – the last one from ESPN. What do you do after mock draft season? Do you wander aimlessly in the streets looking for something to do? How sad are you once draft season is over? Uh, no, I usually sleep for long. It's a lot like when NBA players win a championship. Uh, a lot of them yeah, report yeah. that that right after they win the championship, that their body just sort of shuts down on them because all of the adrenaline, all of the wear and tear finally catches up. A lot of them get like physically sick. Like that, they just get ill. Um, so I expect that to happen. I'll need to be taken care of. So like lots a, of, lots of chicken. Is that a Sam Hauser? Is that a Sam Hauser parade call out? Or is that, <laughs> uh, you're talking about just like other sicknesses of. Well, I'm talking about the only sickness that we talk about on the show, which is the hope that the Hornets mm-hmm. will actually uh, get better yes, yes. and get to okay. a conference finals. You know, the, the only sickness that I have. The keeper <laughs> of mock drafts, Doug Branson. What do you bring to us today, sir? So, yeah, this is from uh, Phony Gavoni and Wu, final ESPN mock draft. <laughs> Number Boo one Will. overall, Zachary Reese going to the Hawks. Saar goes to the Wizards. Reed Shepard goes to the Houston Rockets. Stefan Castle going mm, yeah. number four overall yeah. to San Antonio. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is becoming the most likely and also nightmare scenario for the Hornets, the two guys that could really change the dynamic for them at the guard position, both going in the top five. Then uh, Buzelis goes five to the Pistons, and that means the Hornets are going to select their plan C or maybe plan D for Dalton Connect out of Tennessee, Gavoni writes, Connect's draft range appears increasingly small with teams in the range of number four to number nine, all expressing significant interest except for Detroit at number five. Charlotte has worked out Connect and is fit alongside Ball and Miller appears to be strong with the perimeter shooting and all-around scoring prowess Connect offers. If Connect isn't picked at number six, it might be because a player such as Shepard or Castle becomes available. So here we are thinking that the Hornets probably want Reed Shepard number one. That's what we've come to know really within the last week's worth of time. The cat started to get out of the bag. Meow. Stephon Castle, somebody that has been connected to the Hornets for really the entirety of this mock draft process. But it looks like three guys specifically. Shepard, Castle. Then it feels like Dalton Connect is our safety school. If we don't ex- get accepted by the uh. other prospects. Connect is that guy. David, how do you feel about this scenario unfolding the way it did? And if so, Connect being that choice at number six. So just so I'm clear, this would mean Klingon would be there available, right? They have you would. no one taking Klingon. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. the interesting part. That's a, a, the interesting part to me, even though it's just it's 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 crazy to me that he's actually still in talks for the number one. Uh, and then that Charlotte <laughs> is seemingly just has no interest him in him if he were there. I mean, we'll see. I, I do feel like he's probably, if he were there, he would be a safer pick. I did a little deep dive on Connect last week, guys. I, I told Doug this off air uh, because he was so adamant that uh, 23 years old is not that old. 
But I, I did look into the what the guys at uh, No Ceilings had to break down on Connect there. And, I mean, you know, he's improved everywhere he's been. He stepped up to the line and, and, and done well at each step up in, in the levels. And they had a good team defense last year. And he was a big part of that. I mean, some of that's hard to – uh, quantify and measure out correctly just how much he played into that. But uh, Doug mentioned yesterday, I think, that he's can be that Gordon Hayward type of, you know, non-negative defender, figure out how to play good team defense. And that is what he did at, at Tennessee. Uh, and the shooting is there. So it feels like if Shepard is their number one, it kind of makes sense that they would be like, well, connects there. We didn't get a deal done to pick up a shooter that we really like. Let's get the maybe the second best shooter, second best scorer in the draft and connect and move on from there. Doug, if it unfolded this way, this seems like the direction that you would go to, if I'm not mistaken, trying to puzzle all of your draft takes together. Well, I think if if he and Klingon were both available, I personally would go Klingon. Oh, uh, would you? Okay. Okay. But, well, yeah. because I think and you know, I don't believe that Mark Williams is solidly solidly a core piece like the franchise seems to think he is, um, I think there's room there to add depth to the center position, trade Nick Richards, either acquire some future assets or or bring in some forward help uh, that you could utilize instead of connect. Um, and, and you size up, you increase your rim protection, you give uh, your new defensive-minded head coach and Charles Lee more defensive weapons. I don't think there's much downside to taking Klingon because honestly, if you connect and Klingon as both high floor players, like I don't think either of them is going to be like a future superstar in this league. So you've, mm-hmm. you've sort of taken yourself out of that contest because you're not picking. I think Shepard has that potential. I think Castle has a little bit of that potential. So you're out of that sweepstakes. So I think I would lean more towards Klingon, but I think Connect is a guy that can start right away. Like honestly, I wouldn't be disappointed with either one of those players. I just personally lean more towards Klingon. Let's talk more about it. Coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Yeah, what are some of the other uh, uh, scenarios here that you might feel more comfortable with, with the Hornets taking Dalton Connect, and could he really start? And and how soon could he start? And I have, another, I have another question, too. But we haven't heard anything from Walker, so I want to hear a lot from him. But I've got another question oh, for, yeah. for the crew as well. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Coming up next, Locked On Hornets. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and I love sports. You know I love them so much. I never want them to stop. I know you don't want them to stop either, but as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports just aren't sporting like I want them to, nay, like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want to, and all I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets at any time I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus Every single day. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. More Locked On Hornets ahead. So Doug called me out. He said that we don't know (laughs) what I think yet about this mock draft. No, I think maybe it was just maybe it was the previous episode, but I would put Dalton Connect in a separate tier. Like for me, I'm going Reed Shepard. I'm going Stefan Castle. That's who I want. In this scenario, mm-hmm. Dalton Connect makes sense to me. And I prop like if if we were to go to Walker Mail's big board, Mail Kuiper, yeah. if you will. Yeah. I like to put that yeah. hat on during draft season. If oh, we were to go to that big board, <laughs> then Dalton Connect, I'm pretty sure, is the last player I'm selecting before I get to Donovan Klingon as the okay, mm-hmm. we're selecting a player that can't play on the floor at the same time as another first round pick that we made a couple of uh, years ago. So I think Dalton Connect literally is that last guy for me before I start to dabble in the Klingon business. Yes, I'm cool with this. I honestly would explore trading back in this scenario, but not too far back. Devin Carter is somebody that I like more than Connect, to be honest with you. He was third on my favorite prospects. Even if he's short, the wingspan makes up for a lot of it. The point of attack defense. The shooting is good enough. The catch and shoot at 40%, that was enticing to me. Even a little bit older, not as old as Dalton uh, Dalton Connect, but I think like 22, 
like I would make a bet more so on Devin Carter before I made it with Dalton Connect because I don't think either one of them bring a lot in the way of playmaking. So if that's the case, give me the added benefit defensively if the shooting's a little bit there as well. At the same time, I wouldn't be mad at this. Dalton Connect at number six if Castle and Reed Shepard are gone. I'm walking away and I've got some hope with the score. There's not a ton of prospects yeah. that are making anyone mad. I feel like no one's no one's gonna get like super angry at, at except for Dillingham. If they take Dillingham, then there might be a riot. <laughs> well, the other thing with Klingon, I think, uh, and we don't want to harp on it too much because no one is mocking Klingon to uh, the Hornets at all. I haven't seen one one mock do that. And Doug, they used be, to, by the way, right? Like yeah. they, he would he would be featured every once in a while. But you're right, it hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about him is he would give another lob threat, uh, you know, in the offensive end to LaMelo. And that may be the extent of his, you know, offensive impact, at least to start out with. I think defensively would be much more, uh, much more in the, on the positive side there. But that would be interesting. I mean, you know, you, you look at like Derek Lively this year, that's basically all he did. Now he did pass extremely well as well. But, you know, Luca made him look really good. And it was a big piece for the Mavs there. But yeah, I think you guys are right. It's like the connect thing. It feels like um, a bit of a, a of a letdown, but but I don't think it should be that much, especially not in this draft. And, and like, I'm prepared for chaos to happen on Wednesday night, and I'm prepared for stuff to just go, you know, routine almost. I, I just don't know. It's going to be hard for folks to pull the trigger, trading, giving up assets in this draft to me. But 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 maybe we might see it. So I have a couple of questions, and one of them involves a chaos scenario. And on the on the I'm rooting cl- for that, by the way, I am rooting for <laughs> chaos, Why obviously. Um, on the Klingon thing, like he, I think his name is being bandied about at one two as part of some maneuvering oh. there at the top of the draft. I don't think that he's actually a threat to go one two. Now, I do think that he's a threat to be taken three four if somebody wants to trade with the Spurs really? or the Rockets mm-hmm. to go and get the big. But otherwise, I think he does realistically fall to six or or seven. I think Portland snatches him up, if, if and that's where he went in this ESPN draft as well. But on the chaos um, front, like what if Detroit doesn't take Buzelis? Because everything yeah. seems to, to be pointing to them doing it. But what if they don't, and you're sitting there and you're the Hornets, and you've got a choice between, you know, let's say Klingon goes to Detroit. I don't know why they would do that. They've got – you know, they've got my favorite yeah. Duran. But let's say Klingon goes somewhere and then they, they take maybe they take Connect instead of Buzelis. Like are you are you entertaining Buzelis at that point? Not yes. only am I entertaining Buzelis, I would select him over Dalton Connect, yes. according to yeah. the Walker Mail Kuiper Big Board. Um mm. I think if we're looking for a lot of skill and talent and just kind of shooting for the ceiling, that's where Buzelis comes in. This is one of the rare prospects that we talk about that actually fits functional size at the position and even brings you more size at whatever position he would play, probably that four spot. You're not very strong at the four with this team right now, so that would also help you. I think defensively he's going to bring you a lot right away, and he did shoot well, if I'm not mistaken. He did shoot well in high school. It just didn't yeah. ne- ne- didn't necessarily pan out with the G League. But I was did talking not. about this on Wesson Walker earlier today. Like The G League... G League Ignite specifically, what a train wreck that thing has been. (laughs) At some point, so do you look at it as, okay, I'm not going to blame the prospect for all of the experiences that were had with G League Ignite, or are they so explosive now? Like, I don't know, they came from G League Ignite. I don't want anything to do with that prospect. I don't tend to think about it in the latter I, I like Buzelis, man. Like, we just yep. haven't talked about him because he's going to Detroit, but I really do like him. And if he's there, I would take him over Connect. Absolutely. And you know, I think he's giving you a little bit more athleticism, too. And he's younger, obviously. And he kind of has that, uh, he's kind of got that nasty in him a little bit. I mean, again, I scouted him extensively during the Rising Stars Challenge. There you go. And at All Star Weekend this year. And, and like I said, he hit that shot, the game, whatever, whatever, whatever Brandon over, Miller. Over Brandon Miller. Yeah. And, and Miller made a good contest. You know, it wasn't an easy <laughs> shot. So, yeah, I think that one's a little, that's obviously a, a uh, you know, a higher ceiling pick and you're hoping for it. But, dude, at six, if he slides there, I, I think that's, that's one you take a swing on. And he looked, he looked to your point, like in that Rising Stars Challenge, like he looked comfortable. Oh, he looked I, like I know he it's, belongs. I know it's young NBA players, but they were NBA players, yeah. and he looked, 
He looked comfortable. Okay, one more question before we go to the next segment, and that's have you thought at all about the second round? We haven't talked a ton about it. I'd like to talk to Nada about it a little bit. Have you thought at all beyond Harrison Ingram? As the- <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> it's you, you jerk. It was the only thing that I had for you in the second round. That's the only guy, Doug, you caught me because I haven't really thought about it much. I haven't done extensive research with Prospect 30 and beyond on the list. So, yeah, Ingram Bronny. would be – I mean, well, Ingram and Bronny. It's- okay. I like, I like the Ingram pick because I think it's – I just want to see them draft size, honestly. Like So, in this uh, mock draft that Gavoni did – He's got the Hornets, and I just think all these second-round mocks are just shots in the dark. I don't think they're really oh, yeah. highly yeah. researched. But he's got them taking Jamal Shedd, the six-foot guard out of Houston. And I just like, why? Wow. Like, I don't. Well, well, hold on now. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, sell me. I mean, hold sell on. me a Shedd. I mean, I, mean, I mean, he's a player, or at least he was at Houston. You know what I mean? But, yeah, that six-foot thing, you're really starting to stack those again. Well, we've been down this road, I feel like. No you know? shorties. Uh, no shorties. I'm, yeah. I'm an anti-shorty in this draft. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> Like Devin Carter, except for Devin Carter. That's like the one shorty right. I would entertain. Um, well, and I guess Reed, right? You would entertain Reed. Reed yeah, Shepard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're if you're a shorty that can jump out of the gym, then then I'm I'm still interested. But I'll, I'll give you a couple of names that I do like. I, I like Ingram, and um, there's some other guy out of Baylor, Jalen Bridges. 6'9", like 220. Like that's the kind of body I want to see them take in the second round. Like, And I'll tell you what, uh, and I don't know how tall he is, um, but I would – I, I'm not even joking. He's only 6'2", so he's a shorty. So there's the second shorty I would entertain. <laughs> and that's the guy that David mentioned, Bronny James. I'm totally serious. I think the Hornets oh, should get crazy, you know, smash the vase while Joker's in the room. Let's get nuts and take Bronny James and see what happens. Why not? I, I have a question because I – why are other teams not putting this out and forcing the Lakers to use that first-round draft pick <laughs> if they're not – pure cowards if you're so committed if you're so in use that first round pick it's a the guaranteed deal come on come on um, up reddick and then lebron can we talk can we talk one more acc prospect in the second round so could i interest you in ryan dunn who is considered maybe oh, the best defender in the entire draft and that includes stefan castle so dunn was freaky comes out of virginia we know defensive touted team Reese Speakman, Ryan Dunn just wreaked havoc defensively problem is boy oh boy that's already a program that's hard to watch offensively and it was mm-hmm. worse than other years this season Dunn not a shooter doesn't have any mid-range three-point shot he's pretty bad offensively but he's like amazing defensively so do you want the size at 6-6 the wingspan over seven feet at 6-6 and the anticipation and enough athleticism to bottle dudes up. Uh, would you take him with your second round selection, even if you're basically just punting on offense? Oh uh, Yeah, but I don't think he's going to make it because uh, according to Gavoni yeah. here, the, he's got him at 22 and he says essentially that the workouts that he participated in have, you know, vaulted him into okay. the first round. He probably was a comfortable second round pick option for the Hornets until uh, team's got a, a better look at him, and 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 you know now they're excited about it. So Phoenix at 22, if they don't select Bronny James at 22, then they might go Ryan Dunn. So yeah, I'd be interested. Now that would be you know it's it's a thing that the Hornets uh, have done in the past. It's it's not outrageous for them to trade into the late first round to to find a guy that they like. So if Ryan Dunn is sitting there like 28, 29, mm-hmm. uh, you know I wouldn't be surprised if the Hornets. Uh, go and look to add some more, but particularly if they make an offensive pick in the, yeah. you know, with, with like, uh, with uh, Reed Shepard, you know, if they make an offensive pick or Dalton connect to find some, you know, defense in the draft too. I, I, I think there's an option there. Yeah. I will say we probably yeah. mentioned some prospects that are going to go early second round and, and none of them might be there. And so, yeah, I, I don't know who would be available where they were selecting. So we'll see. All right, we actually have some news to discuss here on the other side. Coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Staff changes not only on the coaching staff, but the training staff. Jeff Peterson, he said he was going to evaluate every position as soon as he took over this job. 
And did he ever with the offseason? And now he's making some changes. Find out what those changes are. On the other side, one more segment to go. Locked on Hornets. Okay, so we have some news. We have some changes uh, within the Spectrum Center. And I guess kind of not Spectrum Center because they're not working there with renovations going on. But you get the idea. Rod Boone of the Charlotte Observer wrote that Joe Sharp is no longer with the Hornets. And he was the director of healthcare and sports performance and also the head athletic trainer. So no more head athletic trainer Joe Sharp with the Charlotte Hornets anymore. David, I'll go to you. Like, it's always hard for me to be able to discuss how much we hold this yeah. guy's feet to the fire. I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this stuff. But all I do know is that this team suffered a ton of injuries the last couple of seasons. The guys that did suffer injuries, like too often, did they not come back after their initial expected timeline to return? You had some weird Gordon Hayward stuff in there about what was being reported, what the actual injuries were, although that's probably just the team. I don't know about Joe right. Sharp trying to mislead people. What do you make of Jeff Peterson and Schlotkin deciding to move on from Joe Sharp? Well, well, that's another piece of it, though, right? Like, they were working uh, under a, a certain regime, and, like, you know, who knows what messages were decided or, or wanted to be put out there and what kind of what they were in charge of, like, were there demands for the ankle braces were the ankle braces not demanded like there's so many ins and outs of this and i feel bad for him in a way because like is he going to be responsible for gordon hayward not being able to get on the court i mean ugh, that's that's a tough one right mm -hmm. and Lamelo's ankle injuries we all said at the times they happen like these are kind of you know freakish injuries that are happening so the one thing you can't um deny is just the lack of playing the, the games that were missed across the board right and so like at some point, a change uh, presents itself to be needed. And, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And when you're doing a complete regime change and you got new leadership across the board, they are examining everywhere. And if they can see room for improvement, uh, then they, they should go ahead and take it. So, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. It's really tough to talk about this because, like, you know, he's not out there hurting anyone. But, my goodness, the team has just been <laughs> That would be bad. Him. That would be an interesting move. <laughs> well, you've – I mean, that's not unprecedented in the NFL. Didn't the Chargers have a situation where, like, their training staff did it something? Punctured that, yeah. That's so right. So, it's not unprecedented. Uh, just, it, they actually they actually took Tyrod Taylor's starting job from him, and Justin Herbert got the starting job and was so good. Tyrod never got it back because he had his lung punctured in what was a normal procedure. So, yes, good point, Doug. You did bring that up nicely. But but that that we haven't heard any reports of of Joe Sharp doing anything like that. But look, Long this country. is a results based business, which is why when people were stepping up, like prominent people within the team and the in the media were stepping up to defend the training staff. I'm like, look, they could be fine people, but I mean the results are the results, and it's less yeah. the it's less the injuries and more the recovery time and the getting these players yeah, back on the point. floor and keeping them on the floor that I think ultimately is is what is costing um, th these folks their jobs. And, and and I think it also is about just starting over, uh, which I think, look, I, I think part of this was uh, Joe Sharp and that team had been through multiple phases of the organization, but it was all under this auspice of, you know, Michael Jordan and company. And so, you know, I think with that change yeah. came reevaluations everywhere and there's nothing wrong with bringing some new voices and some new ideas and some creativity to every aspect of this organization, particularly in an area where they have been at the bottom of the league, which is guys being injured. Yeah. Is Sam Perley going to get pushed a little bit later on into the week or do you want to Maybe we should just have him on at this point. Yeah, we should just have I think him on and talk right. about his article. <laughs> yes, but there was another note, by the way, um, in this uh, Rod Boone write-up, which is that uh, it, it appears as if Cl all of the Clifford assistants, and I assume the Borrego assistants that were held over into the Clifford era, as short as it was, that they've all been let go as well. So here's which we knew when we saw the staff filled out. I don't know if there's anybody else that we're talking about, but when we saw all the names on that coaching staff, yeah, not one holdover from yeah. previous regimes. So they are turning it over completely, and that's not a bad thing. Okay, so we've got media day. It's it's a, a while away. Usually at the what the end of September. So I've got I, I do have one job for you, Walker, because you'll be there. I, I most likely won't be on on site. I need to know 
uh, where Clifford is in the building. I need to know. Mitch Kupchak yep. apparently still has a job. Clifford uh, maybe still has a job. I need someone to ask. I need proof of life. I need a picture of Clifford holding up uh, a, a, a September edition of the Charlotte Observer. I need to know because a lot, a lot of a lot of these big names uh, maybe have jobs and we don't know about it. Cliff, you won't even recognize him, man. He's gonna have a tan. He's going to have hair, long flowing hair. He's just going to be smiling. He's going to be wearing flip-flops, you know, just like. Suddenly there's a lot a of prospects time. in the Bahamas that need Steve's yeah. attention. Look, no no man, doubt. Lots I, I of know, players down there. I know Clifford says he doesn't want to coach anymore, but his buddy J.J. Reddick just got a job in L.A., and I would not be surprised at all if, if Clifford goes from being some draft czar to all of a sudden helping out J.J. Reddick in L.A. That's all I'm saying. I don't know, man. Okay. I need I don't proof know. of life. You think he was? You think it, maybe if they draft Bronny, maybe <laughs> that would be the only thing. <laughs> you got one other thing? That's it. We'll get to this. Okay. So yeah, Sam Perley wrote a great article on the Bobcats expansion draft. There's a lot of interesting stuff. I wish we, uh, David, when we do get to it, uh, we'll have you back on because you are um, absolutely you're somewhat you're one of the few people that we talked to that endured the Bobcats era. In I was its, there in its entirety. Seen it. Rufus on fire. I mean, that's you know, that's a, that's where I made my uh, made made my my practice runs as a as a game reporter, mm-hmm. filling out stuff and and just sitting there on that season. What a time! Oh, I do what have I do have one more take, uh, and that's on the second round of the NBA draft. People have been dying for these second round takes. Well, buckle up because here they are, <laughs> and that is there's one name on this list that I want to avoid at all cost, and that name is Melvin Agensa out of France, almost sure. 20 years old. I don't know anything about him other sure. than his last name is Agensa, and I don't want to have anything oh. to do with a name that is associated with a Bobcats draft pick that will go down in infamy. No Agensas. Relation? Relation? I don't know. I mean, from France? <laughs> I, I mean, seemingly? I don't mm-hmm. know, but I don't care. I just want to stay away from it. You know what? Because – and I can connect this. I can actually do a little thread here back to what we just talked about with the cleaning of the house. I think no one will say this on the record, but I feel like part of this cleaning of the house is a cleaning of the haunted house that you just, there's too oh, much yeah. bad juju around the injuries and around the losses that, that you just need to start over bulldoze the house the house is, was too haunted. Build a new house. I'm glad. I'm so glad that this is happening. Um, it's happening sort of under the radar, which I think, you know, is is good. This is, a way, this is a way competent, mature people handle these kinds of things. It's not a big show. They're not showing like, all right, we're everybody out. You know, it's been a little bit of a slow process. I think this, this uh, group is being functional, and that's a good thing. But house is haunted, no agendas. I like the idea of Steve Clifford and Mitch Kupchak being the ghosts that survive all the renovations and just remain oh, yeah. there. I just Making peeking around noises. the corner. Boom. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's Love what I'm saying. I need proof of life. Otherwise, I am going to assume that they are ghosts. That's David Walker. Find him on Twitter at David B. Walker. Doug Branson. Substack, every hornetsboxscore.com. Twitter handle, Doug Branson, L O H. I'm Walker Mail. Listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Only two more days till the draft.